Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we will unlock the book power, why some people have it and others don't. Like many people, you must have wondered why, despite a great work ethic, some people just don't get promoted. Yet, in spite of a lousy performance, some people are just favored by their leaders. Maybe, no matter what you do, you are not taken seriously even when you handle the most important work. If these things baffles you, this book has a convincing explanation, and offers a working solution. The book suggests a bold explanation of the conundrum. It turns out you are not equipped with the skills to play the game of power. This might be a result of inexperience, that in the past you have never tried to acquire power, rendering you vulnerable and a subject to those who do. The author believes we live in a society with ubiquitous hierarchical structures. The central theme of any hierarchy is a cutthroat competition, people fighting to attain certain positions. Thus, the art of how to gain influence and power is of utmost importance in modern society. This book is an essential guide to career advancement. Whether you are new to a job, rising up the corporate ladder, or in a senior managerial role, this book is a great source of the skills you need for your career development. The author Jeffrey Pfeffer is a famous professor of organizational behavior at Stanford University, who has also published titles including Hard Facts, Dangerous Half-Truths, and Total Nonsense, Profiting from Evidence-Based Management and What Were They Thinking, Unconventional Wisdom About Management, etc. He has carried out profound research in business. He has been a visiting professor at Harvard Business School, London Business School and Ease Business School in Spain. He is also a columnist at Business 2.0. Pfeffer has administered executive training courses in 28 countries, and has provided education and consulting services to many business associations and universities in the United States. Next, we will discuss the book in three parts. Part 1, Why People Pursue Power. Part 2, How to Construct Power. Part 3, How to Maintain Power. Part 1, why people pursue power. You might think there is no need to join the race in seeking power in your workplace, perhaps you think it's a concern for politicians and CEOs, but you couldn't be more wrong. Pfeffer encourages people to pursue and acquire power as their career begin. The hierarchical society we live in, people instinctively compete for dominance to avoid being stuck at the bottom. However, there are many zero-sum competitions in which when one wins, another has lost. In other words, there cannot be two winners. For example, management positions in most companies are limited, when one gets it, someone else didn't. Social psychologists have proven that even though competition has a bad connotation to it in many societies, people like hierarchies. When a group of people is tasked with something, they instinctively form a hierarchy. In interpersonal relationships, even in the absence of formal organization and positions, hierarchical differences and divergences will emerge. Informal leaders with great influence will appear even in insignificant activities, like hosting a book club or going camping with a group of friends. Pfeffer also argues that in addition to all the other advantages of acquiring power, it helps people live a longer and healthier life. In an investigation into the mortality rate of British civil servants due to heart diseases, a team of researchers found something interesting. The lower the rank and grade of officials, the higher their age-adjusted mortality risk was. This was true even when all other rank-related factors were taken into account. However, the study revealed that the differences factors such as smoking, cholesterol, blood pressure, obesity, and physical activity could only account for about a quarter of the observed variation in death rate. What did matter was power and status. In fact, compared to obesity, high blood pressure and many other physiological factors, being in control at work and being of high status in an organization, actually accounted more for the variation of mortality from heart attack. Why is that? This is because power and status allow people to be in control of their work environments. The failure to control one's own environment can damage our health. Low power and status